Lloyd Christmas. A streamlined rocket ship. <laughs> Generic motors. Tell them huh? Mom. <laughs> Daddy. What is? Jingle thing. Jiggle. Jingle. Jiggle something. Jiggle stick or something. Jiggle stick is all you need to know. Think about wearing this up in that club. Dinky winky. It's raining. Well, that's the fun of it. Do you remember your diapers you wore? And yoga pants. <laughs> so <they're laughs> Fresh air. <laughs> oh. Fat spotted Dracula. Okay. Redneck ingenuity. Get it, Scooty. Money. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> Get off my Corvette. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Look at that. We're leaking something. Let me check it. That's not good. It's unfortunate. We need some of that. Welcome back to the Sleeper Dude YouTube channel. We're back with the 89 Super Coupe Project. So if you haven't watched the other videos, we took this little 3.8 V6. We put split port heads on it, ported them, ported the intake. It's got a 97 F-150 intake. But in this video, we're going to swap over to a Mustang intake, I think, is what we're going to try to do, if it will fit, to try to get this thing under the factory hood. And we're also going to try to finish out our turbo kit and get our wastegate mounted get all our accessories back on our engine and cooling system and everything. Try to get this thing back on the road and maybe... Can we do a burnout, you think? Yes. Ralphie's been dying to do a burnout in this thing, so we gotta make his dreams come true. We got a lot of work to do, and we really want to get this thing done for Ford Fest. So Ford Fest is coming up in just a few weeks here, so we gotta get this thing done. It's a five-speed car, so we can bang them gears. Maybe we can drag race it, Ralphie. Autocross, what do you want to do? Yeah. He likes the autocross. Yeah. Our goal here is to basically double the power of this engine. Before we took this thing apart, it's probably making like 250 horsepower. And we're hoping to make like 500 horsepower or 600 with this thing is the plan eventually. We're super excited about it. This thing's been parked for too long. I've been letting it go while I'm working on other stuff. All right, so let's get started on this thing. At first, I'm going to show you a trip that me and my wife made to the junkyard to get this intake. And then we're going to get into trying to install it on the car. Lloyd Christmas. Is it just me or the prices of everything went crazy? It's like a darn hockey stick. We buy a lot of fuel around here, and now we're saving money with the Upside app. If you haven't heard about it, it's a free app in the App Store. It gives you discounts on fuel, on groceries, on eating out, which is, that's the only three things I do in life, okay? All you have to do is download the free app, then once you open the app, it'll show you offers near you that you can claim, look, 13 cents off a gallon, 15 cents off a gallon. That's a ton of money with the amount of fuel we buy around here. I mean, that's money you can use for anything. Just think of all the potted meat and sugary drinks you can buy with that. Everybody buys gas, buys groceries, and you know, a lot of people go out to eat too. I've seen you out there in town. You might as well save money with the Upside app. And you can earn cash back without using a credit card, which I love. Now you might say, Josh, this sounds too good to be true, but it's not. We've been using it, saving money on fuel and groceries around here. It's a no brainer. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to the Upside app. To get started, download the free Upside app in the App Store or in Google Play. And if you use promo code SLEEPERDUDE, you're gonna get $5 or more cash back on your first $10 or more purchase. How awesome is that? Next, you just claim the offer for whatever you're buying on Upside. You check in with the business on your app and just pay as usual with your debit or credit card and then you get paid back. And compared to credit card rewards and loyalty programs, you can earn up to three times more cash back with Upside. You can cash out at any time through your bank account, through PayPal, e-gift cards, Amazons, or other brands. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars a week. That's probably why it has a 4.8 star rating in the App Store. So go download the free Upside app and use promo code SLEEPERDUDE to get $5 or more cash back on your first $10 or more purchase. Now let's get back to the video. So as much as I like how cool this intake looks off this F-150, you can see how much it sticks out of our bonnet here. So we're probably gonna keep this as a spare and we're gonna go to the junkyard. Well, it's just me and mom today and we're gonna go see if we can get this intake at a local junkyard I used to work at actually, where I got my start in body work. Wish Ralphie at least would have got to come with us. He likes the junkyards. 
We had to get permission from the owner to jump the fence to get in here. He's not here today. So this shop is no longer uh, a working junkyard. So we're kind of getting exclusive access here because I used to work here. We got the engine right over here. It's got the later Mustang intake that goes over to the side. So hopefully this will fit under our hood. You think it will? Sure. A lot of old engines around here. I thought you said we was going somewhere fun today. Oh yeah, this is fun. Oh, you okay. Fun? I actually am. We don't want to come off. There's a hidden one underneath this. That's probably what we're holding it. There we go. I wonder why it's so We're going to go ahead and grab the lower intake too while we're here. I think this will bolt to our existing F-150, but I'm not 100% sure. Now where? You think I'm not bringing no night night. Yeah, I found an easier way. Well, this is easier, huh? I thought it kind of was. You should have came that way the first time. You see any night-nights? No. Thankfully. So I guess first thing we're going to do is pull this upper intake. I kind of hate to get rid of this upper intake on here because it does look pretty cool. But I don't think we're going to have room for it unless we just pull the hood, which we may end up doing that if this Mustang intake does not work. Yep. Looks to be a dead-on match for it. So for all the nerds out there that want to know the exact measurements, this one is about eight inches at the front. And this one is like less than four, it looks like. Maybe three and three quarter or something. So hopefully this will fix our hood clearance issues because our issue is at the front because the hood slopes down this streamlined rocket ship. Now does it work with these fuel rails? That's the next question. Oh, we're hitting the fuel pressure regulator. So looks like the rails are not going to work. So that fuel pressure regulator right there sticks up and hits the intake. And the old rails off of this Mustang intake, I didn't realize is a deadhead system. It has no return. So if we're gonna use these rails, we're gonna have to drill and tap and modify them to have a return line. And we're gonna have to run an external regulator now. Really? They were, I had no shoes to wear I'd rather be barefoot than wear Crocs. Shower toes? What's shower toes? If you step on RP, you're like, Wah! I think this is about the roughest set of injectors I've ever seen. Look how they split. What, did they freeze bust? Or... I don't know. I wonder if just the weather did that to them from heat. sitting outside. Maybe heat. They Maybe stopped heat. up and the heat built up. Maybe. Yeah, I tried a couple of different options here. I took the factory regulator off. Thought maybe I could cap that off somehow and make these work. But even the return line here hits the rails, so we gotta do something custom again. This is the tool I really wish I would have had on the side of the road in South Dakota. It would have definitely saved me an hour or so of getting the fuel lines off that motorhome. Oh, that makes it so much easier when you have the right tool. Well, there you go. Without the fuel rails on it, this intake fits right on there. Fits under the cow by about an inch. Definitely looks like it's gonna fit under the, the hood line. So we should be good to go with this. We're just gonna have to make a tight, probably 90 degree here on our coupler, but that's no big deal. Look who got out of his pen again. In here helping. And Ellie, Ellie loves the fan, don't you girl? What are you eating? Okay, I got the injector rails. Our fuel line, our supply line is gonna sneak over here and be able to hook up still. So that's a good thing. We just gotta figure out what we're gonna do about returning fuel. What are these guys doing? This guy's hilarious looking. I'm gonna probably have to figure out a way to mount this coil pack lower than what I had planned because of this throttle body here. I need to get my manifold air temperature sensor in here. I'm probably gonna have to take out one of these and put the sensor in there or something like that or maybe drill a hole in the plenum. We still obviously gotta clean this intake up as well because it's dirtier than them porta potties at music festivals. Pudding decided to come help us too. She likes the fan apparently. It helps me turn the balls on first. So I'm gonna try to take this barb out here so we can tap it for the manifold air temperature sensor. That ought to be about hot enough, Ralphie. What do you think? Yeah. Here, hold that. Just kidding. I love you. Pudding's a good pudding. We gotta drill this out to a 9 16 hole, and then we're gonna run a 3 8 pipe thread tap through it to make it where our 
Manifold air temps can sit through here. We gotta turn this way so all the shavings will fall towards the throttle body and we'll be able to empty them out because you don't want metal shavings in your engine, do you, Ralphie? No. Not good. Let's see how many metal shavings we have down here to our throttle body. Yeah, that's why you don't want to drill something and just let it fall down inside there. Yeah, that's that's more than enough to ruin an engine right there. I'm also trying to figure out what to do with the heater lines. We have this line here that came off the Mustang engine that we got the intake off of, but I believe this is broken down here. So I don't know if we could like JB weld that thing in there and bolt it down and then loop these. I'm just not sure. I, I don't know if I can get a new one of these somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and notch these mounts on the fuel rails, which is the same thing I had to do the other ones. Cause right here you can tell the generic motors injectors are a quarter inch shorter than the original Ford one. So we're gonna notch these. So here's basically what me and Ralph are gonna do. We marked out where it's gonna be. It's actually a half inch. So I'm gonna drill a little pilot hole. Then we're gonna cut the notch out after we get the hole drilled. We got all the modifications made and look, we can't push it all the way down because these brackets are gonna hit the cylinder head, especially back there. That bracket's already hitting the cylinder head without the, so I'm gonna have to cut the bottoms off these brackets as well. See Ralphie, that should work there because we got enough adjustment now to where we can get these injectors bolted down the correct height. So now we just gotta figure out some sort of way to do return fuel. I think the best thing to do is this factory hole here Maybe we should drill and tap it for like a pop thread fitting and run an external regulator. You think that'll work? I don't know what that means, but yes. Which our line's not long enough to reach here, but we can cut that off and lengthen it. Yeah. Meow. Meow. Hey, buddy. It's Goody. I'm so glad you're coming out here now, bud. So we're going to drill this out with a 7 16 drill bit so we can fit a quarter inch pop thread fitting in here to return our fuel back. Now we're gonna keep our Schrader valve in here so we can check fuel pressure and so we can eventually run a nitrous kit on if we wanted to. Okay. This just change your life? Yes. How many shirts have you worn today? I feel like this is like the fourth shirt you've worn today. Mm -hmm. What's this tool called, Ralphie? That's a tap. There you go. Does that work, Ralphie? Hey, put in. We're gonna go out here to the storage van and see if we got some fuel line I can use and fittings to hook up that return line. Oh, sorry. Come on, you baby. Get out of here. Go, 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 go. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. <laughs> So here's what we and Ralphie figured out. We found a 6 a.m. line in the van out there and we put a straight end on this end and a 90 degree fitting on that end, hooked it to this Holly regulator that we stole from the Red Fairmont. So we're gonna have to buy another one for it. And then we need to go from this fitting on the bottom, which is 6 a.m. over to this return fuel line, which is like a Ford style, I think they're called a spring lock. So we're either gonna have to get the correct adapter fitting for that or cut that off and run a hose to it. We're kind of thinking about cutting it, honestly. It's literally non-stop Facebook marketplace. So it looks like I'll be able to use the super coupe brackets on this thing to make most of our factory accessories work. I really would like to keep the AC on this thing. I really don't care about the power steering, honestly. But I do care about the AC. Hopefully we can still keep the air conditioning on the car. Well, it's the next day. We got Coco Melon with us. Tell him hi. Mom. <laughs> My kids are at school today, so Coco Melon's going to be helping us. Hi, What? Where's Scooby? I don't know where Scooby is. <laughs> so we're using the F-150 harmonic balancer, and we're bolting it. The super coupe pulley on it. Hopefully this works. I'm juicy. You got your juices? Yeah. That's awesome. My juice. Yeah, that's your juice. I'm gonna open it. I open it. I yeah, you it. opened it, yep. So this is one thing I've been worried about is is my oil pressure set up, which this feeds the turbo and this feeds the Terminator X oil pressure sensor. I'm wanting to know if this will fit with it because I was afraid that it wouldn't. So I can get one bolt started, but when I turn it, it needs to go up this way. 
and just can't do it for this sending unit. So we're going to have to reevaluate something there. You like the fan? So what if I remote mounted this? What if I took this off and then put a pipe thread feed in there with a hose that goes up and remote mount this thing to feed the turbo and the Terminator X sensor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was really hoping that would work the way it is. So if you didn't watch our other build videos on this car, this is a Harbor Freight air fitting splitter and we drilled and re-tapped it for a GM oil pressure sending unit. So we reinstalled the factory fitting that was in there and we're gonna run an AN line probably up, mount this guy up out of the way so we can tee off to everything. But right now I'm trying to make sure our belts are gonna fit with our oil return and everything. Just trying to get everything bolted on this thing, get our hoses, and belts and lines all figured out before we finish up this turbo kit. After mocking up some stuff, it looks like our belt's gonna fit with our drain tube. There's no reason to have this jack shaft because all this lower and upper tensioner and jack shaft pulley was all for the supercharger. So I'm gonna take all this stuff off just to save space and weight and everything. So we're gonna use this thermostat housing that we got off the Mustang intake. I bought a brand new 160 thermostat with the jingle thing. What was it, jiggle? Jingle store jiggle thing, stick. jiggle stick or something. It's got the jiggle stick is all you need to know. So we got a 160 in there. I really like running a cooler thermostat in the factory. Probably should have cleaned it first. What do you think? Definitely. But you know, I'm just in a hurry around here. I also got an interesting thing I'm gonna try to do here. I tried to get this piece and the one we got from the junkyards broke and getting a new one for a F 150 is a hundred bucks and you know not gonna happen so i think i'm gonna plug this and then use these two as my heater instead of running this one hopefully that'll work i'm gonna have to make a block off plate for the factory ford idle air control valve we welded the one up in the f-150 but i don't have an aluminum welder here at my house so i'm gonna make this and you know you only want the best metal when you're making something like that These are six millimeter by 1.0, in case you're wondering. And no, this time I didn't cut any corners. With this thing right here, I was gonna get a pipe thread tap and run in it, but the biggest one I have is half inch, it's not big enough. Every place I went in town didn't have one. So I actually got one of these right here, which these are made for like uh, freeze plugs. So we're gonna shove that down in there and just plug this off and use these two right here. So you just put these in here and tighten them down and it squishes it out and seals the hole. Here's the part number on that if you're wanting one for yourself. So several hours later, we've been mocking stuff up. Got the fan in there, got the radiator in there. This is how it goes with a custom build like this. You mock stuff up and you take it apart. I went ahead and ordered a new AC compressor because that one's messed up. It locks up if you turn it on. That alternator's bad, so I ordered one of them. We also ordered a new power steering pump because it was wobbling like the family truckster's hoops. So far, so good, but I mean, you put one thing in and something else don't fit. I'm not sure that we're gonna tackle an intercooler in this video. We're probably gonna just straight from the turbo to there because we're planning on running on ethanol anyway. Uh, and probably at a later date, we'll look into maybe doing intercooling on it. I gotta do some sort of mount for the coil brackets. They're not mounted at all right now. We're getting a lot closer. It's filling up fast. Right, this is gonna be our first hood test. I went ahead and got all my junk that was around the edges. Is it gonna clear the intake and the battery? Just slam it. I'm not gonna slam it. Oh yeah, it's gonna fit. Sleeper. Since we got most everything up here that's gonna be up here, we gotta get our exhaust done and welded up so that we can get our cold side plumbing done. So we're gonna weld up the hot side, then do the cold side. Let's try to keep it from hitting up there. We got the turbo bolted up to it now and it's supported under here by the jack. You know, a lot of this stuff is already tacked in place and I could have went ahead and welded it. But in my experience, you really need to weld everything you can with it bolted up to the engine because where it bolts up to the manifolds, if you weld it off the car, it's gonna expand and contract while you're welding and you know, not gonna work. I think I'm gonna have to get a 45 here to go to the turbo, but it shouldn't be hard to do. A little bit of angle here, a little angle there, you know. And when you get older, you had cataract surgery, you gotta weld with a flashlight because you can't see what you're doing anymore. So what I'm trying to do now is make a flange to mount my wastegate to the exhaust system. It's kind of got to sit up at an angle, so I'm gonna have to bevel this thing, but think about wearing this up in that club. What do you think, honey? Uh -huh. 
Can she get in for her belly? Look at her go. You want some? Ooh, ooh, oh, ooh. you know she does. She's like, what? Not RC Cola. That's my weight eater. Hey. This is Rocky Jr., Rocky Jr., Rocky Jr., Rocky Jr. out here at the barn this morning. I gotta get some sort of exhaust for this thing out of the barn. I might could use that. That was an experiment on the Starlet that I had. It's gonna have to be a really tight three inch exhaust coming off the turbo. That's your helper. Oh, another helper tonight? Now it's old truck running boards is all it is. So we cut our piece of truck running board at an angle there. And I think this is gonna fit. It's gonna, I'll probably have to go back and pie cut it down here somewhere to get the angle a little bit steeper, but I don't think I can do it here without making this flange too long. So I'm gonna tack it to our exhaust flange here and we can weld this up. So I got this overly thick piece of metal here and I'm gonna bolt it to this tab on the frame and we're gonna weld it to the exhaust and that is gonna support this turbo because you can't just hang a turbo way off the motor really? like this. Yeah, it'll crack everything. It'll Honestly, it'll still crack, but if you have supports, it helps. It's just like anything in life. If you have support, it helps. Now it's completely supported on its own. Well, I've got everything welded I can do under the car. So this thing should be where it's going to be. Hopefully it won't flex on us when we finish weld the top of this. I think we got it all welded up. And remember, if you got too wide of a gap, just throw a bolt in there and weld over it. You'll be fine. We got the wastegate flange welded on there. Got our T3 flange welded up, or bracket, right, Ellie? I'm gonna put this thing back on, I think. Hopefully for the last time. Maybe we're done with the making the exhaust out, I believe. So while I was out in town, I got a union right here for a three quarter inch hose and just union it back there because that's a molded hose going back to the heater core. And I couldn't find a three quarter down to five eighths adapter. So I just got this. So I'm gonna shove this in the three quarter inch end which is going down the heater core, and then do a 5 eighths from here over to that fitting on the intake. If you buy these cheap flanges like this, you gotta make sure they're flat. How you doing? How was school? Good. I'm gonna go ahead and goop this up with some RTV where it bolts up to the exhaust manifolds. This wasn't designed to work with a turbo, so this will seal it up a little bit better than what it would have from the factory. So we don't have any leaks, because if you have leaks on a turbo setup, you will definitely have turbo response issue. Get that crop <laughs> out of my shot. <laughs> Is this gonna hit it, this? No, it's all the way grouped, so it ain't gonna group anymore, group dog. Wait a thing. Rocky Jr. is scared of the storm. It's about to storm outside, and he is scared. You better get back in your pen with Mama. So I just use the RTV on always on the turbo flange. Every time I've tried to use the actual gasket, it just blows out. This is a big moment for us, Ralphie. I mean, we're bolting the turbo on for good. Have we started? We're going to very shortly. Ooh, that's reassuring. This makes me so excited, Ralphie. I agree. All right, do the front one up here, Ralphie. Hold this one up here. Oh. Hey, it's raining. So this was a factory coil mount and it was a really dinky, winky bolt. So we're stepping it up to, I think this is a six millimeter 1.0 to bolt these coils down. So you probably won't be able to see these once I install them, but I got these plug wires here from MSD I'm gonna put on it, to get a little more spark down there. Here's what we're replacing. We just put some stock ones that I had off some LS engine around here for these. 
Well, there we go. We got those installed. And despite all the stuff that's in here, it really is easier to work on than what it used to be because we had the aluminum intercooler pipe from the supercharger before. But I got a fuel line run from the end of the rail over to the regulator. I bolted it down to where the factory ignition module was, got our boost reference for our fuel pressure regulator. Uh, all our sensors are plugged in. We got the remote mount line run to our oil pressure sending unit that feeds our turbo as well. There's a lot of plumbing here, but if you just do it one at a time, it's not too bad. And if you have a question on where this line goes or that line goes, feel free to ask in the comments. We also have a boost reference here to the three bar map sensor. And this is going back to our boost gauge. So we pie cut this thing. It was gonna come out right up against our muffler. So who wants to weld it? Me. Me, me. me. Look, Squeezy said no. Squeezy without glasses, look at that. Aww. So I always brace my hand like this. Check us out on other platforms at Sleeper Dude 88. If you keep the pile hot like that, it welds better. Okay. Look, right into what you're doing. She did good. All right, Ralph, you want to try it? All right, stop, stop. Look right into that weld. Use your left hand to brace the right one. Do it again. Up. Hit it. Hit it. You did good. My uh. pinky is burning. Who did better? Come on. I don't know. Wawa did really good. How do you connect this air horn? I don't, yeah. I don't think it works. So this is our wastegate flange. Now the wastegate is what controls the boost level. It opens up and slows down the turbo speed by bypassing exhaust pressure. We have no idea what size wastegate spring is in this, so it may boost to the moon. I have no oh, yeah. idea. The reason we placed it here is you want it in a straight shot of your exhaust system. You really don't want it like laid over at a 90 this way. So I tried to angle it the way the exhaust flows. What are you doing? What are you scratching in there? Are you supposed to be doing this? No. Well, that's the fun of it. If you put pressure to here, it opens this valve and pushes against the spring. So getting the least amount of boost, you want to put your boost pressure here. If you want more boost, you can actually put in pressure back to the top. If you want all the boost, you just unhook this, put it all the top. Oh my God, this is not working. I'm a nervous wreck. <clears throat> okay. I don't understand. I got, just let me look at this a minute. It goes like that. I can't even, <sighs> I can't even see it because your hands are all. <sighs> oh, I'm getting in. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have to work on the cloning process. We're going to have to clone me to get this on here. That's close. <sighs> we can't do it. It's not going to work. <sighs> just pop back out. Attempt nine. Oh my gosh. I fumble fingers the whole time. I don't feel like it got close enough. Maybe I could. I don't know. Yeah. I can't do it. I can't do it for more than like one or two seconds. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Play go. Ralphie's the winner. I need the bolt. Mom fell 10 times and Ralphie did it on his first try. I thought my arms were going to turn to jello before we got that done. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and install our air filter because we don't want even a single particle of dust getting in this motor. We don't want to hurt anything. That is so professional, isn't it? And if you're wondering where Squeezy went to, we've coined the term, we may need a copyright, slinked out. So Squeezy likes to slink out, which I guess means like a slinky just yeah, sneaking easy. out. So she'll be out here trying to help us work. And then you'll just turn around and squeeze is gone. gone. And she is slinked out is what we call it. But it's about eight o'clock now and those 90s movies aren't gonna watch themselves, are nope. they? Mm -mm. So we gotta get at it. Well, it's next morning. We got the kids off to of school. Since we finished well to this yesterday, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on permanently. And I'll kind of show you which way it's pointing now while we had to do that pie cut in it. 
for now, we're just gonna have her dump on the ground. And we'll see how loud this is. Usually a turbo really quietens down a car. You really, usually can run a turbo car with no muffler and it'll actually not be terribly loud. So here's a view from under the car. All the exhaust goes in the turbo, spins the turbo, which spins the compressor, which puts boost in the motor. So the exhaust comes out here and it's gonna dump out at the bottom of the front bumper. Now we could go from here you know, out the back of the car or across the front of the car with a muffler or something, but we're probably not gonna do any of that. This vacuum line here goes up to the outlet of the compressor and it gets a boost signal and that's how it regulates its boost level. So I had to go ahead and order two couplers for here because this is like a, they're both like a 30 degree angle. So I had to order two couplers for it to go from three inch to two and a half. This one's just two and a half to two and a half, but they're both at like a 30 degree angle. I can't find the correct fitting for this. I can find three eighths, but this is seven sixteenths is the measurement on this. So I'm probably gonna end up cutting this off, I bet, and running it to here with a barb fitting with a five sixteenths hose is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. But man, what a tight fit for everything, huh? I mean, for a V6 car, all these accessories just stick out. I'm not used to, building cars that have all these accessories. Well, I did with LTD, but it didn't have power steering. So one last thing I'm gonna do before I take this intake back off to clean it is, I've gotta figure out some sort of throttle cable deal. And these are pretty much exact opposites of each other. So that's not gonna be fun. I gotta be able to turn this thing all the way around that way. But originally this throttle body was the other direction. So that makes it a little hard to do. So me and Ronk are out here looking through the parts. He's digging through bags and everything. Here is a factory Ford throttle body. And I think I'm gonna have to end up cutting this off of it and welding it to our GM throttle body to make it work. What do you think, Rocky? All right, yeah, he thinks so too. Well, there you go. I cut the throttle arm off the Ford throttle body and welded it to the shaft on the GM one. Hopefully it's in the right position because <laughs> it's welded now. Yeah. So here's what I was able to come up with. We basically, this is like a piece of old shelving I had. I made a little twist in it there, drilled holes in it, and took the old Super Coupe throttle bracket, cut it down, and then it's going to bolt up where these two bolt holes are right there, and then our throttle cable hooks to it. So we got a working throttle now. So now it's finally time to tear this thing back apart. We're still waiting on some couplers. We're still trying to figure out our return fuel. I think we're pretty much done mocking stuff up. So I'm gonna take it all back apart. We're gonna go to town and get our new AC compressor, our new alternator and power steering pump because they're all bad. Well, we got everything off here. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this intake because it's dirtier than your uncle at the last family reunion. See what the degreaser does for it. Look at that. Looking better. We're gonna wash out the inside too because we got, you know, we drilled and tapped stuff on this thing. We don't wanna get any shavings inside this engine. You know, more than there already are for me working on it. Ooh, I've seen chunks. <laughs> And just like that, we have all our new parts here. Got our new alternator, our new AC compressor, our new power steering pump. It's kind of incredible that all those were bad. Also got a coupler in the mail for our inlet pipe, an accumulator. We got the stuff to flush the lines out because we had a compressor go down on this car before. We are gonna start sticking these parts on and hopefully try to crank her up. Yeah. Right, Ralphie? What have you done to your pants? Ragnick. Right those aren't pants anymore. Those are now shorts. Yeah. So I'm gonna start by taking these AC lines loose because we're putting a new accumulator on here. You don't want these open to the atmosphere. That's why they're always capped off because these are absorbing, it's a desiccant, okay? It's absorbing moisture, just like a diaper does. You remember your diapers you wore. Same thing, can't have them around moisture. So make sure and leave these things capped and uh, not open the air when you're messing with them. Does your diaper have moisture now? I went earlier and changed it. What are you doing? I'm combing the spikes on these. Trying my best to get this accumulator dryer out of here. Usually you push towards it to push those springs out of the way and then it's just not 
the whopper and all, um, don't want to break the evaporator for. I'm living the life. Eating bacon in the garage, working on a Thunderbird with a turbo on it. What's better than that? There's three great inventions in this lifetime. Bacon, turbochargers, and yoga pants. <laughs> you better watch yourself. You should show them your Cheeto fingers. Use the finger cleanup. Look that video up, the finger cleaner. Stop it, 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 that's disgusting, it's so good, that's so disgusting, <laughs> that's disgusting, <laughs> it's so bad, what are you talking about, somebody make that commercial, so after literally like an hour or more of trying to get this to come off, I'm trying to cut this ring off to get this spring out, Maybe I can finally get this out of here. I mean, I used the correct tool for like literally an hour. I don't know why it wouldn't come off of here. If I can get that spring out, maybe it'll finally come out. We shouldn't have to do any of this. It has no spring in it at all. It should just literally slide off there. I've never had to take one off this way. I've always been able to get them off there. Look, that's the whole ring that the spring sits in. See it twisting in there? What's holding it? Well, it still won't come out, so I'm gonna try to heat up my heat gun. I think the O-rings are just stuck in there. That's the only uh, thing I can think of that would cause this. Yep. Heat always works. Those triple O-rings must have just been stuck, yes. Well, they stuck in there. Get out of there. Anytime you have a compressor go down, you wanna change your uh, dryer. So now we got our AC flush stuff, and we are going to flush out this evaporator core Make sure we don't have any junk in it. There you go. Look at that black, you see that black stuff? So that's what we're trying to get out. Any kind of metal. See, it looks like it's coming out clean now. So we're gonna flush it out with compressed air. <laughs> oh, that, man, that's that. rocket. It smells like orange. Orange, yeah. Right, we're going to do the same thing with our lines. So since we ran out of the flush stuff already and the parts stores are already closed, I'm going to use denatured alcohol because, you know, one Google search, one guy on a forum one time said it would work. So that's good enough for me. So this is a weird one here. This is the liquid line and the orifice tube is in here. And I bought an orifice tube thinking you could slide it in the end like you normally do. Now you have to buy a whole new line to get an orifice tube. So we're gonna flush this one out. Now we gotta flush this beast out. We're gonna let this stuff sit out for a while and air out before we put them in there. Man, we are really going the extra mile with this one. We are putting all new O-rings on even. What has gotten into me, honey? <laughs> so now we're moving on to our power steering while those AC lines dry out. It's got the variable power steering or something, so I guess I gotta take this thing off because the new one doesn't have it. Oh, there we go. We got the new pump now. And this thing grooves down in there somehow. I don't know, it's variable, they said. Some people are. Start putting our accessories back on here. We got our new pump with our old thing on there that does computer things and makes it steer better or something. I don't know, just made all of that. Feels good to finally be putting these things on for the last time, hopefully. I really hope it's not our pulley that was bent the whole time. From what I can tell, you can't even order this pulley. I probably had to find somebody that had another super coop. We're having trouble with the pulley moving on us. We finally got that on. Here's the real test. Oh, it was the pulley. Okay, we're gonna have to be looking for a pulley and we probably bought a pump for nothing as I don't remember this in lining before. So I'm gonna have to get a Super Coupe specific power steering pump pulley somewhere. They thought at the parts store that I was getting this for a diesel truck or something because it was eight rib. I'm like, no, just got a hog leg in it. So we're gonna go ahead and put our AC stuff back on now. And make sure your O-rings have some oil on them. These already were oiled from the factory. Hopefully this thing will snap right in easily. 
Look at that. That was way easier than taking it off. It's funny how easy they go together. They sometimes take you forever to get apart. So we're gonna put our compressor on now. And it says it comes pre-charged with three ounces and the system's supposed to have seven. So we're gonna put four ounces more in the system. Probably an ounce or so in here and I'm gonna put the rest in the condenser. I bet it'll outrun a Corvette when it gets done. <laughs> Did Squeezy already slink out of here? Oh, yeah, you know she, she slinked out. Huh? <laughs> Don't wish you hadn't. There you go. So now the whole AC system's sealed up. It can't get any air or moisture in it. Hmm. We can pull a vacuum down on it. Put it around here. Got it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that, the belt fits. Pretty sure that's the F-150 water pump pulley, but it looks like it's gonna work. And that rust on the pulley just helps it grip better. Oh yeah. That's what Ralphie likes to do after he work on cars all day. Oh, almost Ralphie. First one to make the shot wins. Oh, you won Ralphie. Fat spotted Dracula. Well, it's the next morning. Me and Ralph here are the only ones awake, and we're dying to start this super kick. We're gonna go in here and do what we can to try to get this thing running today, get it all buttoned up. So first thing we're gonna do this morning is pull a vacuum down this thing. So I got it hooked up to the R12 fitting. We gotta go get some conversion fitting so we can charge this thing. Go ahead, Ralphie. So it should pull it down to 20 or 30 inches. As you build a vacuum on this, it's gonna pull the moisture out of the system. It's science, Ralphie. Yeah. You're already awake, Rocky? What is he doing? Eating cardboard. I gotta use the bolt. Back up. Oh, oh, oh. No. <laughs> Apparently at some point over the last, I don't even know how long this has been. I have to go back and look, maybe nine months. We poked a hole in the core of the radiator. It'd probably be good to get like an aluminum radiator, but we don't have one today. So we may end up upgrading the radiator. This one always worked good for me. Oh, that's a good little hole, ain't it? Yeah. I did clean this with brake cleaner first. You're wondering about it being dirty. That's a guaranteed fix right there, right, Ralphie? Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, JB weld this bracket back on too. I don't know how it broke loose from the tank without blowing a hole in the tank, but we're gonna go ahead and see if this will work for it. Give her a little scoopy there. We wire brushed it to try to get the corrosion off of it, but I don't know if this will hold or not, but we'll try it. So just in that part where I am? Right here too, you can put oh, some. Okay. For half a radiator, it's super heavy. Our hose that used to reach is now hitting the belt. So we're gonna have to do something different with our upper hose. Our lower hose worked out just fine. Could, wait, could you like? This end has to go to the thermostat housing because the size of the hose. What? I didn't know if you could like turn it up like some way. We might can cut it and put a piece of pipe in the middle. Okay. I wonder if that worked. And then turn it. This go here. Yeah. What if we like zip tied this up or something off that and put a piece of pipe in the middle? Redneck ingenuity right there. Well, there we go. That should keep the hose in here. May have to zip tie it up to that heater line or something to make it work, but. I think that's gonna work, don't you think so, guys? Yeah. Oh, epic sunglasses, son. Hey, Scooty. <laughs> Jeez, it's kicking the dirt. Get it, Scooty. Get it, Scooty. Get off. This is my Corvette. You're gonna ruin it. Oh, you're eating the leaves. That's actually helpful. Thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up our power. We're gonna prime the fuel system and see if we have any leaks before we put the upper intake on, because I'd rather find out about it now than after we have the upper intake on there. Can you stop? Hey, not my glasses. Get out of here. So I just remembered I don't have a fuel return line yet, so I've got to make this, uh, adapt this fitting to make it work. We're kind of having to work with what we got here. I would buy the correct fitting to adapt this thing, but uh, best I can tell, I can't find the correct fitting. I found a size smaller and a size bigger than our return line, but not the actual size. This actual first fitting here came off my Maverick back in the day, a dozen years ago. 
kind of hate to do this but like i said i couldn't find anything to adapt this over so we're just gonna cut the end off of it slide a 5 16 fuel injection hose over this and clamp it like crazy we don't have your papaw's worm clamps that you found in the tool shed floor we've got actual fuel injection line clamps to clamp the thing all right Ralphie, we're gonna have you cycle the key yeah go ahead I hear it. We got one leak over here. Well, the only leak I see, Ralphie, is this one right here. It's not too bad. Maybe I just left that loose. I don't remember. Where? Right there. See yeah. it? I left it loose. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of fittings under here. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe that'll fix our only leak we found. He's getting antsy, ready to start it, isn't he? Every time, is that, are we gonna start it now? We're gonna start it? Yeah, cycle it. It's making some Taco Tuesday noises. It is sure. making some squishy noises. Okay, I think we're good on fuel. I think we can put the intake on. I don't know how many times we've had it on and off. So this goes to our factory boost gauge. And then this right here goes to our three bar map sensor. Okay, like that's my cardboard to eat. Damn it. What do you see on Marketplace? People call money oboe. Oboe. So yes. you see stuff on Marketplace and it says oboe, which means... I don't know. Moolah? Money. So oboe means money. It right? does. You're saying it does. I think it does. O oboe is or best offer. Oh! <laughs> so if it's like a thousand dollars oboe, it means a thousand dollars or best offer. There you go. Now let's see if we got any leaks with the cooling system now. Uh, here's something like that. Is the pickcock open? Yeah. Pickcock's missing. So that's where our leak is right there. And I have no idea where the plug is for it. We're looking for it. Well, it looks like we're pulling it, the radiator back out because I can't find anything that fits this, so I'm gonna pull it out and see what fits it, I guess. That JB Weld held. We can't find a drain plug, so we're gonna just fix it, you know? More JB Quick Weld, run a bolt in her, let her dry a few minutes, and you're good to go. While that's drying, we're gonna check our fuel pressure. Go ahead, key it on. Well, we got 50 PSI, that's good enough for the girls I hang out with. So we've let this dry the exact amount of time the manufacturer suggested, and now we're gonna fill it up. Same way I drink. I like using a funnel like this. If you have air pockets, this is higher than any air pocket, so it tends to get the air out of the system. Right, Wawa? Yeah. You burping the baby? Yeah. Yes. We found that screwdriver that does. <laughs> Jesus, Mom. All right, Ralphie, crank it and see what happens. <laughs> well, it runs. It's not quite as loud as it used to be, huh? No, not at all. All right, crank it again. It did get oil pressure, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't see any oil spraying out anywhere. I think the timing needs to be set, honestly. I'm wondering, if, I think our map sensor may have an issue because it. I noticed it's not reading vacuum out here like it should. Even when I gave it throttle, it was still stay, staying at the same KPA. At least it runs. That was pretty good first, first go, though. Was the turbo gone? I didn't even look at it. Probably the $10 map sensor I put on it. So once again, I've stole a part off of the Red Fairmont project. I have a three and a half bar map sensor I was saving for it. And I shoved it into a hose because I didn't want to drill and tap this and take it all back apart. And I just shoved the wires into this connector and we're going to see if it works. We're going to set it up for a three and a half bar Holly map sensor. See if that makes any difference. We're going to change it to a Holly SS three and a half bar USB link. And then we're going to send it to the ECU. Okay, try to start now. Let's see what our KPA readings do now. Ready? Yeah. I 
saw it go down the 80s that time on KPA. It's a lot quieter. You like it, how it sounds now it has an exhaust? Yeah. All right, we're gonna try to verify our ignition timing here. Click on the one that's like the gauge right here. Click on that. It's not running right for sure. We got some sort of parameters wrong. So I'm gonna make a big change in the timing. This idle timing is 12. I just bumped it to 30 and we'll see what that does. If it wants more timing or less. All right, try it, Ralphie. Let's see what that does. shows you that our timing is off so what that means is we probably have to do some sort of offset on our ignition tables i'm learning holly as we go by the way this is the first car i've ever done holly on so i'm probably going to have to go in here into the ignition parameters custom we're going to configure and we're going to do a timing offset so i'm going to put in i don't know let's put in a 30 degree offset because it seemed to like when i went from 12 to 40 and let's see if that makes it run any better. Can we? <laughs> can we? We can shortly. We don't have a cooling fan working yet. I'm gonna try our other thirty dollar timing light here and see if it works. I don't know. I have. What the, have you done to them? I don't know. Something. This one's brand new and I've never had it be able to work. I have the worst luck with timing lights ever. It's a really crazy, amazing that this works. Like right. I don't understand how it works because there's been a lot of okay. Let's plug this in yeah. here. We're just. Where's the, the where's wall. this? I'll find it. Oh wait, here it is. We'll use this. Yeah, so far I, so I'm, good. I'm I'm shocked. Yeah, crank it, Ralph. Let's try this again. <laughs> now my timing light's working. So it looked like our timing marker was here that I made on top dead center, and we were just like a half inch up this way. I got to figure out which direction that is, and we'll make the adjustments. about it <laughs> we should be at 12 degrees and i've got the timing light set on 12 degrees that looks like it was closer let me try a few more degrees crank it ralph it's within one or two degrees right there i think i'll add like two more degrees to it so i put it on 43 degree offset let's try it now ralphie that 
looks dead on to me. If our timing light is telling us the truth, it's dead on. So I'm gonna whack a ton of timing out of this thing. I usually try to take one degree out for every pound of boost above 100 kPa or zero. So we're gonna gradually take timing out in the upper RPM, upper boost levels. You could probably copy and paste somebody else's timing table in would be much easier. So there we go. That's a real basic timing map. Now really, you want less timing wherever your peak torque is. So if you make peak torque at 3000, you really need less timing in here and you can trickle it back in up high. This is wide open throttle on motor. This is 15 pounds of boost. So I've got 15 pounds of boost, 15 degrees of timing. Then if you go on up to 300 kPa, 30 pounds of boost, eight degrees of timing. My rule of thumb is on pump gas 93, 15 pounds of boost, 15 degrees of timing at wide open throttle is my kind of limit I like to stay at. If you go up to like E85 or say 110 or above octane fuel, then you might be able to go to say 30 pounds of boost, 10 degrees of timing. If you're running something crazy like uh, straight alcohol or really high octane fuel, then it's totally different. I decided I was going to wire in an external fan relay. This thing has like a, I forgot what they call it, like an IIRC. It's like this big relay box. So I don't want to use that at all. I just want a standard automotive relay in case we break down somewhere, we can get a new one. You can trigger it right out of your programmable on and off outputs. So we got the fan output wire here, which is a ground signal to the relay. Does not ground the fan, it grounds the relay. I'm gonna go to town and get the correct stuff to wire this uh, fan relay in. We're waiting on a coupler still for our pipe. So we're gonna go to town and get this stuff and wait on the stuff to come in the mail and then we'll really drive it with some boost, right? Yeah. Come on. Come on. I got this wired in. Here's how we did it. So you got the main heavy power wire coming in and you have a jumper power wire which this yellow wire only powers the relay itself. Then the white wire is the ground signal for the relay itself. This wire is the output wire for fan number one from the Terminator X. So it sends a ground signal that just grounds the relay to kick it on. And you got power going out here and you always want a heavy gauge wire on an electric fan. We've got 10 gauge wire here to do it all in a 40 amp relay. Still waiting on the coupler, got the fan wired. Haven't tested to see if it works. And Ralphie's dying to get this thing out. So we're gonna back it out. I look, it's been one year since this thing broke down. So look how much dirt and junk is on it. We could just make a cleanup video on this. So Ralphie wants to pull it outside and clean it up. So we're gonna back her out. Under power for the first time in a year. This is the first time I've heard it from inside the car. so different doesn't it yeah you ready to rip some donuts huh yeah so let's look at what this thing looks like man we lost one marker light on the highway and the other one just fell out so i'm going to glue it back in and do something but this has a honda odyssey front bumper on the bottom it's a rear bumper off a of honda odyssey if you're wondering why the bumper is wrong for the car it's the factory upper honda odyssey rear bumper lower i've made just put new hoops and casings on this and then it broke down like a month later so we're good on hoops and casings made this spoiler out of an old stop sign i want to eventually smooth that up and paint it I fixed and repainted the rear bumper probably a couple years ago. This thing's actually a clean interior car, kind of low mileage car too. So we'll get it cleaned up and uh, take it for a ride. It's just crazy how much dust and dirt this thing has on it from a year in the shop. Golly, I might as well do a dirt report in here. Look at this. We got some Vania cans and stuff. Man, look at all the junk in the floor under this thing. Wow, look at that. Is that Ralphie? Look at that. It's gonna be a different color when we get done. It changed colors, didn't it? 
Man, I love those gold hoops on there. I think these are 18 by eight and a half all the way around. They're 255, 45s. It's the biggest thing you can fit on them without doing, you know, sticking them out the side. It does look a lot better cleaned up though. Ralphie says we've got to glue this marker light in. You gotta hold it, Ralphie? Yeah, definite. 100%. Yep. Ralphie's begging me to drive around the yard. that kind of stuff can't do it too often we won't have a front yard <laughs> left okay the big day has finally come i got my three inch to two and a half coupler that's at an angle probably gonna have to hack on this thing and bend some pipes and you know things and stuff to get this to fit ralphie's gonna be so excited when he gets home from school so i'm gonna try to knock this thing out get our pipe in here so we can start making some boosty boys well, I bent down on this a little bit without kinkle dinkling it, and it's still kind of run into the strut tower too much. These cars have big strut towers compared to a Fox body. So I'm going to chop some off this, maybe an inch or so, and see if that fits. Cut maybe an inch off of it here. I might have to cut it a little bit shorter. We'll just get a pipe in here and find out so we're not just Bluetoothing this. Now this is the same pipe we had on it with the truck intake, except for I cut four inches off of it. Just old exhaust pipe I saved from my old work. Is that gonna work? It's rubbing that. I don't know that that's gonna work. It's almost like it needs another 45. I think I'm gonna have to cut some more off of this one here to make this line up because it's running right into this big old strut tower. There we go. I think it's gonna fit right there. We cut about two inches off of this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this thing black because I'm fancy. I'm actually painting the old exhaust pipe mm. before I use it as an inner Amazing. Pipe. Well, there you go. It's super fancy. Ralphie's gonna be so proud of me for doing it right here. Even did it right on the radiator overflow. Taco Bell cup, you know? You don't wanna use like a McDonald's one. You want Taco Bell. Don't worry, I pushed the diet button. Nobody's gonna drink that. That's going the extra mile, isn't it? That's not going any mile at all. Ralphie, you're gonna be so proud of me. Look at this. Beauty phone. Isn't it beauty? Yes. We're gonna see how much boosty boy she makes. We really can't go probably above 10 or 12 pounds right now because we're non-intercooled on pump gas 93 with stock fuel pump, so we'll try it. Okay, we got the crew loaded up now with these 90 seat belts. 
gotta work on startup. You gotta crack the throttle. I think I gotta work on that a little bit. Oh, it's nice to have a manual transmission turbo car again. something let me check it oh, Lord. let's see what's going on here there's some liquid right there what do they got going on it may just be pushing out coolant i smell a little bit of coolant i see some stuff right here we may have a little bit of a coolant leak ralphie i don't see anything obvious but i do see where it pushed something out i don't know where from where radiators leaking ralphie or what oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's probably a radiator i think so it is kind of crusty, musty. Look, I got a bunch of coolant down there. I think we got a leaking radiator, Ralphie. That's not good. Looks like we are leaking somewhere on the tank. It's unfortunate. It puts but you back in your seat. It does. We're definitely gonna have to go down on wastegate spring to get some less boost out of this because it's got all the boost right now. Ralphie said it hit 15 pounds of boost, so less than that would be good right now. Oh, that's sad. Unless we switch fuels. I have no way to turn the boost down though. So we're gonna have to go with a weaker spring. We'll have to go through our springs and change it out, but we'll still play with it here. Let's take it for a ride. Our temp's 193, I don't really like that, but it's been sitting. They usually get hotter when they sit. Our temp is already starting to go down. We're getting down to about 180 now. So that's good.
switch it up where it needs to be. You can change all the parameters on how much you want to learn. This thing does have year old gas in it. I don't know how quick this new gas goes dead. something like powerful especially like a manual transmission powerful car to drive it's been too long that was a lot of fun ralphie did you have fun yeah it was fun well what do you like it yeah we we're only bummed we couldn't get to do a good donut there it uh kind of hit like boost cut and neighbor cut and we had to go yeah <laughs> we got a lot of loose ends to finish up here you know we're just kind of throwing it together enough to drive it definitely gonna have to lower some boost level bigger injectors and bigger fuel pump on this thing but it hasn't burnt the fender up with the exhaust that's good news did it push out any taco bell yeah shoot it's making baja blast for us i see it can you believe it's making that baja blast for us we need some of that that's that good stuff yeah man this thing is just over delivered this time well i guess we're gonna finish this one off right here come on i had a good time i have been dying to get another drag racing horsepower build this is what this channel was built on, was doing turbo swap, weird engine turbo stuff with old ugly Fox bodies and Fords and stuff. If you don't know that about our channel, go back and check it out. My first project on the channel was a turbo Maverick with a VA and a four cylinder in the beginning. Turbo LTD station wagon, turbo Starlet. So 
Go back and check those videos out if you didn't know they existed. You already poured it out for your homies? That was yeah. quick. I really can't believe how easy this thing ran and, and drove, considering, you know, it's a fresh build with no tuning whatsoever. So next steps, obviously, is gonna be fuel system upgrades and lowering the boost down, and then turning it back up once we get this thing figured out. It's really incredible how good it ran, considering that much boost and no tuning at all. You just ate, you can't do it. Yeah. If he eats anything, he can't eat nothing else. I'm super excited to see how fast it'll run. And we have to do some data logs on it and get the thing tuned in just right. We need to take it to the drag strip at some point for yes. sure, right? Maybe we can get it to the autocross or drag racing at Ford Fest. We're planning on going to that here in, what is that? A month or so away now. So we're excited about that. So we're gonna be planning on going to Cletus and Cars Bristol and to Ford Fest or the big ones we're planning on going to right now. Check out our second channel at Two. Exactly. And check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Exactly. Merch drop. Whoa. Hello. It just happened, didn't it? Like and subscribe, homies. It don't get much better than Thunderbirds, guys. Thunderbirds and Fairmonts, they're my jam, you know? They really are. And Fairmonts are ugly. Oh. I can't believe you said that, son. But we'll see you guys in a future video. We don't have a website. Everybody ask us that. You can buy our merchandise down below, like he was saying. It'll take you to Teespring's website. You can buy clothes there if you want some. And we're going to have to share these with Vane and, and Rocky, aren't we? Yeah. We better head out to the field. You Rocky proofed the gate, did you? <laughs> I tried. Like every time we fix something on this fence, they find a new hole. You'll keep them in for like a couple days and then Rocky Jr. will figure out the new layout. Hey, girl. You're looking beautiful. All right, Rocky, we didn't forget you. Calm down. Here you go. Here, let's see it. Let's see it. Give it to him. There you go. There you go. Give that back. There you go. I wouldn't do that to you. Look, let's see if any other goat will eat it. We've never had another goat eat it. Nope. Not for you. Just Rocky. What about Rocky Jr.? Will Rocky Jr. eat it? Possibly. Hold on, Rocky. Let let your son have a bite. You look, nobody likes it but Rocky. How incredible is that? Oh, is me <laughs> mean Every Rocky Jr. is after you? Look. Here you go. This this cracks me up. <laughs> You're crazy. Ravi's gonna give Vaina her RC color. Now slow down, girl. Oh geez, you already got it, girl. Wow. That ain't gonna go to your hips. Record time. I think it's all going right here, right around the neck. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Alright, see you in the next one. Pudding. Little pudding. Oh, yeah. She's the sweetest one. She has to be. Tell him bye, Ralphie Jr.